Okay, I totally just made this video and it was great, but like right at the last end, rather than saying thank you, I just ran away from the camera because I thought my, my ferret was going to get into trouble. And so I hit stop and walked away and came back and it had just started the recording and I totally forgot or didn't click well enough the record button. So you don't even know what I was talking about this whole time. All right, so to start over again, um, we're going to take a look at uh, Sonoma Springs Brewing Company um, out of Sonoma, California. Uh, black, uh, no, I almost called it Black Magic. Bruja, mm, Bruja Magic Alt Beer at 5.8% alcohol by volume. Now, two things already, um, you know, just having looked at this and then the alcohol content are both not really to style. This is entirely too dark for this style and oftentimes really shouldn't get any darker than um, a brown. And this is definitely, you know, very, very dark. I mean, darker than a brown ale even, I think, uh, would be. And um, the alcohol content, um, it, the range it, for this style is 4.3 to 5.5%, um, and we're at 5.8. And so this is kind of like a powerful, like, variation on um, alt beer, which is interesting, um, you know, since it's, anyway, it's interesting. It's actually a very good beer, spoiler alert. So, let's go all the way back to the beginning here, um, where we talk about uh, aroma, um, and I'll just refresh my beer. Um, so let me get a little bit ahead, okay. Um, oh, now this time, alright, anyway, it's very malty, very deeply grainy, I mean, it's got like this nice kind of roastiness to it, and I really appreciate that. I like the darker roasts, um, you know, so it makes me think of, not coffee necessarily, but it's, it's, it's up there, but deeply roasted grains. Um, beautifully done. A little spicy. Nice and crisp, though. I like it a lot. Um, so, color-wise, now this is what I was babbling about a moment ago. Color range that is preferred for the style is a light amber to a deep copper color, stopping short of brown. Direct quote from the BJCP style guideline. So oftentimes you're going to see them in a bronze orange um, with brilliant clarity. Um, and so clearly, you know, this doesn't fit that bill. Um, but I feel like this beer is probably a variation on an alt beer, um, you know, a modern interpretation or, you know, whatever. Anyway, so I won't hate them for that because actually the beer is pretty good to drink. Um, but, so color and uh, alcohol content are not to style, but what it does nail is mouthfeel, but we'll get to that in just a minute. So flavor-wise, this beer, mm, gosh, this beer has so much yumminess going on. It's very, um, um, very deeply malty, um, and, um, predominantly malty even, and it does have some, um, hoppiness to it, I feel like rich, complex, grainy malt is really, like, the, the defining factor of this beer, um, it reminds me a lot of a porter, and as a matter of fact, when I first had tasted it, I was like, wow, this is totally like a porter, but not with the same body. Because um, it actually is very light, very carbonated. Um, it may be a medium light, but still pretty light. Especially like when you look at it, you're like, whoa, this is going to be a pretty hard-hitting hard -hitting beer, but ends up being somewhat light and kind of sparkly on the tongue, which is, you know, kind of plays with your, plays with my brain, um, but that's easy. Um... Anyway, it has this nice finish to it, and so it has this deep maltiness and this nice kind of um, um, clean, hoppy, almost spicy finish, but only a little bit. Um, but the carbonation kind of cleans it off of your tongue, um, makes it almost dry in the finish, um, which I think makes me no because it happens when I drink nice and fruity red wine I don't even know anyway it's a kind of a drooly beer for me I feel like it makes my mouth water um and um it's very enjoyable um so mouthfeel um 
it should be medium bodied, but um, and medium to medium high carbonation. Um, so it's definitely this beer is definitely carbonated, and the body is you know is a medium light. I want to say even just like a little baby medium light. Um, but um, with this big bold flavor, it's kind of a nice finish, you know, because I feel like a lot of the um, light body beers, which are really gr good to drink during um, the hot weather, um, tend to be lighter ales just because that, you know, there's less um, cooking time in, so the, the grains are softer, the, the flavors are softer overall, um, or the lighter grains, not, you know, not as, as roasted. And, um, and this is kind of like a, a light beer, but a dark color, which is kind of cool. I kind of like that about it. Um, and it even says in the style guideline, despite being very full of flavor, is light bodied enough to be consumed as a gravity fed session beer in its home brew pubs in Dusseldorf. Uh, more information, I think, than you probably need. But the point is that, um, you know, body wise, it's, it's this really um, kind of sparkly, light, drinkable beer, and it's it's very nice. But flavor wise, it's big and bold and has a lot of stuff going on. And I think this this even more so with its big and boldness because of the grains um, being so dark. Um, so, um, the comments and the history I think from the BJCP style guideline are interesting, and so I'd like to share them with you. So my, actually, before we even get into that, in case you don't want to listen to all that junk, overall impression, very drinkable beer. I think this is like a, a variation on the style, um, brewed a little bit darker than uh, the style would normally pr would allow for, um, also um, resulting in a little bit higher alcohol content, um, both of which I'm not necessarily opposed to, but I think different from the style enough, it makes me want to drink a beer that is listed as uh, a commercial example. And, um, you know, but it's good. It's a good beer. Very drinkable, and I'm glad that I have it. Um, so now, comments and history on this style if you want to listen. Uh, so this is a top fermented, uh, fermented lagered beer fermented at cool ale temperatures between 59 and 68 degrees, often conditioned at bottom fermentation temperatures of about 50 degrees, uh, and then lagered at cold temperatures to produce a cleaner, smoother palate than is typical for most ales. Um... That's one of the reasons we're getting that super nice, clean, light body. Um, there is a brand whose name I'm going to slaughter, Zoom Urig, um, is a wonderful beer, but much more aggressively bitter and complex than most German examples, most other German examples. Um, it may be like the Fuller's ESB of the strong bitter um, category, well known, but somewhat of a stylistic outlier. Um, and so don't judge, it cautions, um, don't judge... Uh, all alt beers is as if they were Zum Urij uh, clones. Allow for more balanced bitterness in the beer. 25 to 35 IBUs is more typical for most other German examples. Stronger Stick and Doppelstick beers um, should not be entered here. Um, and so um, there's a lot of interesting commercial examples, all of which I find um, utter, almost utterly unpronounceable. So there they are. I don't know if... Mm. Anyway, showing things on screens is not, doesn't translate well, but, um, you know, there's a lot of commercial examples that are interesting. Um, and then the uh, history for this style, uh, the traditional style of beer from Dusseldorf, uh, alt refers to old style of brewing, um, i.e. using top fermenting yeast. That was common before bottom fermenting lager, um, be before... Uh, bottom fermenting lager brewing became popular. It predates the isolation of bottom fermenting yeast strains, though it approximates many characteristics of bottom fermenting lager beers. Uh, many of the classic examples can be found in brew pubs in the Oldstadt uh, or Old Town section of Dusseldorf. So cool. I also wanted to share because we were talking about color earlier. Um, so the style guidelines really have a have a color uh, have an opinion about color, which is listed here as SRM, and this range is 11 to 17 percent. And there are tools that you can get. You can approximate this yourself, but also, um, you know, look at tools that will estimate it for you. And I have this app um, that includes the SRM spectrum. Um, that was convenient. Uh, and so earlier when I had come in and done this video, the first time I had kind of picked a color that's dark enough to represent that no light comes through here, darker than a brown ale, but not like a, 
uh, not like a lot, uh, a stout necessarily dark. Um, and, um, so the estimation of the SRMs based on my estimation is 23. And so for the style of, we're looking for something lighter that gets terribly technical about, um, you know, about what's happening in the style. Um, but an interesting little tidbit. So that's actually an app that you can get and try yourself. It's called Beer Judge and I found it on the the app store um, for iPhones. Um, anyway, so there you have it. Um, very drinkable beer. I like it a lot. I'm actually really glad I tried it because I'm very much into those multi darker style beers um, and um, hadn't ever had this particular style before but now I feel like I've kind of broken into the style and I need to try some um, that are on this list. Um, so, uh, a couple of things. If this is a beer that you've tried before, please share with me. I would love to hear your opinion and where you were able to find it. Uh, and then also, do you have recommendations for alt beer styles, um, that you really enjoy, that you feel are, are very, um, representational of the style, representative of the style? I'd like to, um, try them out. And I might not be able to find them in my area, but I'm also curious to know if you recommend um, any particular beers. So now we have talked about the beer and its history and its, its style comments and showed you my little SRM tool. Um, that is quite enough. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.